All right, everybody, welcome back to Mr. Dunn's Ceramic Room. Today, we're gonna make wind chimes. Let's get started. All right, welcome to this episode of the wind chimes. Well, here's the one that student made that I found left around. Tinkles and tinks. Not super loud. So, it's a starting point of discussion. <laughs> the smaller they are, the higher the pitch tink sound you get, and you don't get long, longer sounds, right? Uh, with ceramics. But of course, you can make a wind chime out of many things, right? Metal, wood, bamboo. I've heard all kinds, but ceramics works very well. Um, if you make the right shapes and they make many different sounds. So I'm going to make one for this week's example uh, with many different shapes in it in an effort to come up with many different sounds um, more than just this clank. Notice also they can get tangled up really easy and sometimes they get stuck and don't undo. This one nicely undoes because they're far enough apart. One issue I've had in the past is that the wind they're all identical pieces. They don't, they, and the length of the string is almost the same. They will swing together, and you get no sound. <laughs> Never the wind blows it. They all just swing, and they're too far apart. Another issue is if they're very heavy, big long tubes and pieces. That I do want to do. They pull down, and so the wind doesn't blow them. They're too heavy, and so they just sit there and move a little bit. They don't move enough to hit each other. So you have to have lighter pieces in there, and what's called the, the fan at the bottom that the wind can blow and take that little piece and hit all the bigger pieces in between, right? So we'll look at some designs on the board. Um, we'll design mine out and let's get going to hang it from. Um, another way to do it and that I like to do is um, kind of the bell, the bell shape. This puts all of these, it would have to be pretty close together. They can only hit the one next to them. Now in a circle, right, with little holes coming down and you have your strings. And now they can interact with each other more and hit each other more. And you can also have a crossbar in here with a piece hanging down in the middle. So I'm going to try this type. It brings them all close together. I'm going to try a bigger piece here, right, with uh, different kinds of shapes cutouts down here. So what shapes and things do you want to do? So you got to think about that. So what shapes do you want to do? So often they are themed, right? They all have leaves. They'll have feathers. They're all little, um, this is a famous one. If you look online, there's actually quite a bit of YouTube videos and online about making these. They have these little uh, cone shapes like that with a string going through it taut and a hole in the top going to the next cone shape. Oh, too high up, but maybe down here. Then you have another one. And this one interacts with the one next to it over here, another one that you might have, right, with the shapes. Right, and they hit each other, and they sound pretty good, because um, they're like miniature bells. So we might do some of those, right? So think about the different shapes, research different shapes. Do you want to theme it? Do you want to do it all with like cookie cutter stamp outs? Another issue, if they're too thick, you'll just get that dead sound, tink, tink, tink you won't get any resonation in, in longer lasting sound or lower sounds. Um, so let's make my list. I want to do uh, different size shapes. And we'll see where we're going to put them here. I want to do um, a, uh, some feathers. So they'll have like this post with a hole in it. And then all right, maybe um, a feather. And that also looks like a leaf. I was going to do a leaf, but Right, so this is like that. So I want to do a feather. I want to do um, our like a maple leaf. I have the cutouts for the maple leaf we can do. I might do a, a hole here and do a second one here. Another maple leaf feather. Uh, I was going to do uh, the other leaves. A, Twisting uh, some of these two is really cool when you, you twist that out. So we might do that. Um, in the center, I want to have a, 
something big that the littler ones around it will hit and maybe make a lower sound um, or a longer resonating sound. And so that's going to take a bigger piece of clay. So I thought of doing a swirl of clay that doesn't touch itself, right? Let me go, it comes out like this, it goes in. I don't know if I can draw that well so you can understand what I'm saying. And then this, well, that's big. Comes in here like that. So, so this is one big piece of clay that goes around in a circle. So that way, if you opened it up, you'd have this big panel that you could cling, it would resonate. But put it all closed and it's confined and all the other things could hit it from around. We would just need a loop of clay coming up here with a, a, a hole to hang it up into here. So that's my plan, to hang that into there, hang some leaves and feathers around it. Could even cut out some, uh, some bears and animals and, you know, forest animals or birds or any picture you want to cut out of a slab. Um, and turn into a piece from your, for your wind chime is awesome. So that's it. Let's get to it. My plan. All right, let's get a slab of clay. Put it in there. Oh my. All right, let's go make some beautiful wind chimes. All right, here we are. Let's see if we can't make this idea come true. Um, I want to also put some patterns on my different shapes. Uh, so I took this set of wood rollers to get some different patterns and then I'll cut them out so they have some texture on there as well. Um, so I'll get to that. I even got my bigger leaf shape. I think I'll cut out my own feather shape. Uh, but first let's make our cone shape, if that's the one we're going to do. Um, I need to make a little compass. I guess this will work. Okay, when I make the bell project, this is what we did. So, I'm going to go from this side. That's pretty big. So let's try this. All right, there's our center. We can use this in a minute. For some parts. Let's make our cone. Um, I like to have a nice straight edge here. I like that. So here I cut under, here I'm going to cut over. And uh, hopefully in a circle that will help them come together nicely. I got some white clay in it. So let's see what happens here. We could put a texture on this as well, which would look cool. So, hmm, this has got some nice wind designs and swirls. I think this would be cool, but kids have left clay in it. So I've got to clean it out. I need the hook tool. water would probably do it better. Uh, I would love to turn it in a circle but it doesn't work that way does it? So what if I just kind of go across it like this? Is that working? Yep. Gotta push pretty hard with this one. That deformed my, my design there. Okay. One thing about this is nice. Don't have it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. Okay, let's bring this around. Let's see how this comes together. Yeah. That cut over and undercut helped a lot there. Making it longer makes it go out on this side and shorter here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down and re redo my circle. Right here, I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. Right there, I think. Oh, shoot. Oh, See how much we got it off by? No, should be more perfect. There we go. It's very round. Put this together. Water. 
If you can make it something clang inside of this, this itself would ring as a bell. This is what we make our bells out of, right? And remember if you uh, make an opening cut in here, it'll have a lower sound, like a cowbell. I might just do that once I get it all together. Okay. Here's this one. So we got this. There we go. Always want to smooth our rough cuts. We don't like those. Let's uh, plan this out. Smooth this. Maybe we can roll that roller on it in a minute. Okay. I like to. Uh, Clean up these cuts with a wet finger. Get rid of those hard cuts. Alright. Maybe now we can, uh, where'd it go? Get this to I don't know, we can roll down it. Yeah, that kind of hides it a little bit. So you can't really see that spot. Okay, there's our top hanger to hold. So you can either pinch this and we can put a hole through it and a string will go up, or you can make a metal, uh, I mean a, a ceramic loop on it and then hang your string to there or hook that on a hook. Um, either way is good. This will do some the wind blows this, it could actually make this one a swing, and that works better on a on a string. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, pinch it here, make it strong, and uh, we'll punch a hole through there with the hole puncher. Hole punches that. Different size hole punchers. I think for the big one here, we want a fairly good size one. That. There we go. Okay. Curve that. All right. See, got a hole punched in there, string hanging that, and that can dangle any length we need. We do need to put the holes around the edge for the string as well. Um, I'd recommend, you know, same size hole here. And then we'll use this one for the smaller pieces. All right, so let's put holes around the edge. So one of the issues, if you put them this far apart and you make little things, again, they will just swing and they will never hit each other. But I'm planning on making pretty big shapes. So it depends how big your shapes are gonna be to how far apart your holes are. So just keep that in mind. And these cannot be moved. Or you can make many holes and then you can move them around. And so that gives you more control. You don't have to use all the holes, but you can get them closer together so they clang and, and make uh, a sound. And since it's a one and done, you can't get them later, I might go ahead and put another pair of holes in between each one in case I'm having that trouble myself. So it's just a, a safe way to make sure it's going to work. On a wood, wood thing, you'll be able to slide the string around and put it wherever you want it, on a bar. Um, so we'll actually have ten and if you want, you can put little ones in between that will cling the bigger things. So, it sounds fun to have lots, but the more you make, <laughs> the more work it is and the longer it takes to do all this. You know? Okay, there's that. 
put that over there. Let's see. Let's get uh, a big leaf here next. That looks cool. This one has its own texture in it. So let's push that down. So let's make um, like a stem here that can hold. We'll put our hole in right there, this little guy. Yeah, okay, here we go. There's a leaf, all right. There we go, I wanna put a hole in this here. Hang it from. There we go. One issue again to all these sharp cut edges, I do suggest you clean those up a little bit. So, here we go. Run a wet finger over them, smooth them all out. Careful of anything too sharp, that will chip off as they cling in the other things. So you want nice strong tips. Then you have really sharp pieces hitting. I've had them out there so long, I'm in front of my house that they've fallen all apart. The string breaks, they fall on the ground in the windstorm and crash. So be aware of that. If you don't have good string, it will deteriorate in the weather and fall apart. There we go. Makes a mess. <laughs> Sliminess. But I think that's done. Um, ooh, it's three-dimensional. I do want to put it on both sides. Need more water. What if we went like this? Push those lines in over here as well. Huh, I didn't get it centered. It's not square, but that works. And finally, do you want it to hang flat or do you want it to curve, right? And I think uh, cool, dried, twisted, has a better chance of hitting the leaves next to it. It's cool, Lou, like that. So I'm gonna do something like that. A little bit of a curve. And that is, that is big. Maybe I'll make some smaller leaves above it, below it. They'll definitely hit each other. So one way to get it to dry how you want it is to like get a sponge, set it down like this, and it'll dry hanging over it, right? Whatever your design is. So let's get this over here. Drying. I wanted a, a long leaf as well, and sort of feather. So I think this could give us a feather. Let's get that. Handle here. And then right to my edge. Swish and whew. That looks cool. All right. I'm going to texture this all up, so let's get this rounded first. break off. Okay, it looked like a pepper. <laughs> this could be several things. A leaf, feather, pepper. So I'm going to use this hook tool here. It's not the razor blade. To get my core center line here, it plows the clay open into a V much better. Get a little bit lighter here and come out to the tip. Now I'm going to make, is this a feather or another leaf? This is my feather. All right, so I'm gonna go like this. Just come off each one. Fill it with the texture. 
curve line. Seems to be working. All right, there's my leaf, my feather. Sorry, it would be nice to put on both sides. Maybe I'll do that. All right, side number two. All right, there's leaf. Might even uh, curve that as well to a twisted effect, right? Remember, we're hanging this three-dimensionally. So a little bit of a twist, maybe over that. Wait, I don't want to put this. A leaf, a feather, need more clay. Stop this. In. Okay, um, found these smaller leaves. I thought some of those would be good around the side. So we got bigger sounds, smaller sounds. Let's, uh... Let's make the big twisted one in the middle now. The pattern on it and everything. Here. Let's just pull this off nice and straight. This off nice and straight. Side can be probably pretty straight. Oh, the inside will need to be. I think the center is going to have the hole right there. That's going to stick up. back together where nothing's touching. Then you have one big panel that will resonate hopefully. Alright there. Put this right in the middle. And somehow hopefully be balanced not to hang lopsided. I feel like that this needs to come over here. And about the hole here. Go pretty deep. This is heavy. Like that. Alright, it's got this cool design around it. It's a swirl. Clang and dang. So I just got to put it somewhere to dry now. Get it set up. Whew. The issue is. That uh, that takes up my whole bell. The leaves and everything will definitely be hitting it. 
too too much can we tighten it up as soon as one piece touches or the glaze bridges it's not going to work there we go let's try that oh that's a lot better a piece like this I'm going to hit it well these are probably hanging below it then right we can have some little ones here so either the little leaves or now we can make some smaller smaller shapes to hit there bars squares triangles circles all right you can even make some beads and things like that that will clank against it so we can go like this weight's an issue that's already going to be really heavy um, if you want to have more than one I'd say you only need one on each one here so we don't need so big like that there we go we can make a, a like a bell cling thing So it can hit always without ever hitting the string. I'll go like that. Oh, I use the big hole puncher. Oh well. See, see how a flat that you can fire it and glaze it. All right, and then we can hang it on there with a ding ding. Hit that there. Cracked up a little. Smooth that out with some water. five clingers to hit around here one in the middle four we need five of these okay got some scraps let's do one more bell All right, let's put the hole in this one here. Oh, funny. Okay, another twisty idea maybe. Okay. I think we're done. Can't wait to fire all these and hook it up. I'm tempted just to uh, clear glaze all this because it's in red clay and not the textures and everything and uh, see how it sounds just clear glazed and uh, you can see the brown a brown style even this one. Oh, you know what I forgot crossbar how are we going to hang uh, anything from this without a, a bar inside there um, let's do that really fast here. In the middle, to make your string go in the middle of the, rather than sliding to the side. All right. So in recap, 
we got Bell. I've got five large things to hang down. One, two, three, four, five. The other five holes I did in between those five holes are these little ones that will hang halfway down and cling on this, hopefully. And then hanging below this, so there's some length to it, will be these three big ones and these two little ones. And hopefully they're big enough to hit each other. And that'll be cool. If not, I'm thinking of this leaf hanging down the middle here. I need another hole on the other side of this. I don't know if I can get to it. I'm trying to keep this as tight as possible. Anyways. All right, that's it for now. Now we're gonna fire these things and put them together. I don't wanna end it there because then you won't see what they sound like, which is kind of the whole point of a wind chime. So, and doing all this experimentation with different sizes and this big piece in the middle. So, be right back in a snap and we'll see uh, how it sounds. Let's fire that sucker. All right, okay. Let's clear coat all this. That leaf. Big leaf. We'll go for the natural red color. Turns them white, but it turns clear. Pinch the hole so glaze won't get clogged in the hole. Let's see, dries. I have trouble focusing if I'm too close. And when you let go, it's clear. It's clean. You don't have to dig it out or clean the hole. It won't clog with glaze. Right. And all my little cleaners for the this thing up here. Same thing. They also have a flat bottom on there so they can fire without melting the table. Set it on the table, let it melt it down. That's it. Let's see what it looks like when it comes out of the kiln. There's the wind chime, guys and gals. Sounds pretty good. I'm happy that these are clinging high sounds down here, and that's a much lower sound up here. Okay. So that worked out. Bigger panel makes a lower sound, smaller parts make higher sounds. Um, get out there, hang in your backyard, and enjoy. That's it for this project on Mr. Dunn's Ceramic Room. Catch y'all later.